Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrets It, Brexit Britain, where the life and the times of a dead black alpaca is more important than you. That's you Brexiters, of course. And also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all of your messages you sent me, and a special thanks here to everyone who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up, so thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages, I'll answer as many as I can, but I will like all the messages for definite. So, as I was saying in the, at the start there, yeah, can you believe, right, that the alpaca, the dead black alpaca, is making the news again. <laughs> nothing about the Honda workers or the farmers or, you know, or the haulage industry. Nothing about none of those things. Just the alpaca. <laughs> it's just, you know, this country just, this country just cracks me up sometimes. But we've got like, um, you know, obviously Boris Johnson's been in a lot of turmoil this week. There's been quite a few um, things that um, have come out, you know, a lot of different revelations. Because I, I believe we're up to like at least seven parties now. Right? And um, all Dominic Cummings, yeah, he's putting the boot in as much as he can. Right? From wherever he is, he's putting the boot in. Right? And um, so, yeah, so it's up, we're up to like seven parties or something like that, where these guys have been keeping after telling us that we can't mingle, right? And these guys, that we find out that they were, it, it, that last year, Christmas time was party central up in there, right? All hidden up by the police, because the police knew exactly what was going on. Uh, you can't even tell me, right, that Christina Dick didn't know that these guys was keeping parties all the time because you know what yeah it would have been well you know it among the police community it would have been spoken about the hypocrisy of it do you know what i mean you know even though right these police officers know that these mps think they're plebs but still do you know what i mean they're still just like they're still just 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 carrying on and just carrying on right? allowing them to do these things you know it's you know the the, the level of corruption is a, you know it's a, it's a very very high level of corruption a level of corruption that we will never ever reach to right you know because first of all yeah you need, you're going to need you know to you know to get to get you know your peerage you're going to need to have at least 300 grand that's the that's the op that's just for openers. When it comes out to Boris Johnson, that's just for openers, because after that he wants a lot of different sweeteners here, there, and everywhere. Because you see, now all this stuff yeah has come out about you know about the decorating of the flat, right? And you see, look with with the whole um, Zach Goldsmith thing, right? You know, obviously he made Zach Goldsmith a peer of the of the realm, you know, a lawmaker forever, right? So. And then, obviously, you know, he was given a fantastic holiday because, you know, he was given a fantastic holiday on the back of that. I doubt Zach Goldsmith had to pay 300 grand for his peerage, right, because but him and Boris Johnson have been friends from, like, from, from, from school days. So I doubt he had to pay that, right? But Boris Johnson could get away with that one and say, well, you know what, friend of the family, isn't it? Right, man just invited me out to just go and just, like, have a holiday in, in his place, isn't it? Right, but this late this latest one that's come out now, yeah, it's like he's actually tried to hide the actual facts of of this, right? Because what's what's it, it's blatant what's happened, right? You know, you could just look and say, well, actually, we can see exactly what's happened there, because this is what's actually happened. Boris Johnson has made him into a lord, so a pair of the realm, a lawmaker forever. Right, so he he probably paid he's probably paid his three hundred grand to get into that club. Right, so obviously, right, this guy, right, he is in charge, right, of this funds that Boris Johnson apparently is setting up, right, to um to pay for the flat redecoration. Right, but it turns out. Right. There's only one person actually putting funds into the funds, which was the guy that Boris Johnson made the Lord, right. because the funds was open for people to put in. Say, you know what? Yeah, you know, we believe that we, we believe that you know the the flat in um in Downing Street needs to be done up. It needs to be done up, right? And we are prepared to put our money in to have it done. 
So, so, so that's so that's that's the story that they're coming across with. Do you know what I mean? They say, well, you know, yeah, the money come from like loads of different people. It was in some funds, but that's not the case. The case is just simple, right? What they've done is they've probably just sat down and just said, you know what, this is how we're going to do it. Right? We're going to say that you know what that we set up a little trust, right? And people can put money into that, right? And then we pay for the flat in that way, right? But then when it come out, when it all come out, Boris Johnson was quick to take the money out of his bank account and give it back to the Lord to pay for the decorating of the flat. Right? That's why at the time he could say, well, um, you know, I paid for it myself, even though he didn't initially. Right? The guy that he made a Lord had paid for it initially because all Boris Johnson was saying, all Boris Johnson does is the people that he makes into a Lord, yeah, let you know he'll get the he'll get the three hundred grand off of them, but they still owe him. Because obviously he's made them you know he's made them a peer of the realm forever. Do you know what I mean that means that you know that means these guys virtually go to like they get to go to the royal weddings and all these type of stuff. You know, state opening of parliament and all them types of things. Do you know what I mean dress up in their dress up in their fancy gowns, right? So 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 all of that they get. Right. So but so anyone who Boris Johnson has made a lord. Right, it, we, Boris Johnson will be making sure that you know what the payment don't just end at that three hundred grand. Right, you pay for my holidays. Right, you'll pay for my school, my, my kids' school fees. You'll pay for my, you know, you'll pay for my child, my, you'll pay for my child minders. You'll pay for, you know, for, you know, for, Boris Johnson gets food every week. He gets, he gets like a, a um, delivery of of food. Yeah? And, and the company that the company what they um what what sends them this food yeah, is a proper high class. Right, so you're looking. At, so each meal, right, will be in excess of eighty five pounds, right, for each. You know I mean? So whatever. You, so whether it's whether it's breakfast, whether it's breakfast you're having, or what you know I mean, lunch, or you know, I mean? the, you know, because it's it's a company that does like ready meals, but they're ready. And I don't know who I can't remember who owns it, but it's more than likely going to be someone, right, who's putting money into Boris Johnson's pocket, who, who, who somehow. Right. Boris Johnson right, has done something for them, made, made them into a lord or made them into a sir or something like that. Do you know what I mean? To make sure, right, that you know, and this, and you know, so that's how he, that's how he gets his food. And I know, I know that the, it would be if it was us ordering from that company. I'm sure, it, I'm, I'm quite sure for like for two people, it comes to over fifteen hundred pounds. Uh, in meals, do you know what I mean? So it's really proper. It's proper expensive. Do you know what I mean? It's proper expensive stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's not like your normal run of the real meal, ready meal, right? That you would find in like your your Marks and Sparks or your Tesco's or your Morrison's or your Asda. There's loads more supermarkets. I'm not going to mention no more, right? But it's not like do you know what I mean? it's not like those ready meals. Do you know what I mean? The ready meals that we our ass have to eat, right? For three pounds, right? four quid, six pounds. Tesco's finest, right? <laughs> That's what our ass is eating. But these guys, like the ready meals, what they're eating, right, is proper, proper class. Right? And you see how people, and you see how Boris Johnson all the time, anytime he goes on holiday, yeah, someone else pays for it, right? And you see, so the, so the whole flat thing now, because he's tried to lie about the whole thing, it's come back now to bite him on the ass. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, whereas you should just put it in the book. Do you know what I mean? And say, well. No, that that that's not what happened, you know. But you, but the Boris Johnson's probably going to get that money back from that lord anyway, some some other way anyway. Do you know what I mean? You know, if you look there, none, none of his um, MPs want to come out and defend him now. Do you know, none of them have come out this week. They were just like, you know what? They're, all of them are just minding their business. They're just staying away this week. Do you know what I mean? Because all of the, all the corruption, everything's coming at him at one time. Do you know what I mean? But you know, there's still a lot of people, yeah. Who are phoning the radio on that? You know, do you know what I mean? And defending, defending Boris Johnson. Do you know what I mean? You know, what gets me right is that you know if the, if the Tories do boot him out, right? It's like these guys get get to destroy this company, this country in this way, right? Because you know between David Cameron and Boris Johnson, right? Them two men yeah, have done more damage than this than any wars that could have. Ever happened in this country, right? Th these guys have completely just destroyed things. Absolutely, right? The destruction of this country is just unbelievable. What these guys have actually done. Do you know what I mean? You know, do you remember when um, 
because yeah do you remember when um um donald trump you had donald trump and barack obama right so um donald donald trump said yeah that we should leave yeah you know, should leave 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 don't worry about anything else you go right don't worry about anything else that's what donald trump said but barack obama said listen you know something yeah we deal with big trading blocks and you will be at the back of the queue do you know what I mean, right? Because basically, yeah, doing a deal with us, right, is going to be like doing a deal with the Grenadines. Okay, right? You know, we're a small country, we're a small island, right? And you're talking about, you know, us going up against a trade block. I mean, just thinking about it logically, right? You know, you're always going to be at the back of the queue. What if you're dealing with like a large trading block as opposed to a sm a, a, as opposed to an island? You're going to be dealing. You're going to be saying to the island, "Well, you know what? So we need to deal with these guys first, and then, and then, when we've got some time, we'll come and we'll look over your proposals." Okay, because you know they've got to take them serious, right? Because they can put much more money into your economy. Okay, so they've got to take them a lot more serious. Right. So they've got to look at them much more favourable. You know, that's just the way it is. Right? Now you see, Donald Trump told you to leave. Right? Barack Obama said, listen, you know, you really need to stay close to the EU. Donald Trump said, leave. Because Donald Trump knew, right, that you know something. If you do break away, all your financial services is going to be up for grabs. And America is going to grab hold of a lot of it. And that's what's happened. America's just grabbed hold of a lot of it. That's it. Done. So, I mean, so you see, all all this, all of this, right, is down to putting an absolute clown in charge of the country, right? And you just have to say, yeah, none of Boris Johnson's MPs want to come on the telly to defend him. And I wonder why. Right, this man is committing carnage, right, in the ground of the world's greatest seats of power, committing absolute carnage, right, and for me, I say, you know something, it serves these motherfuckers right, this teaches you a fucking lesson, right, that's what it does, right, the ducking, the diving, right, the dissembling and the deceiving from this fucking dick, Right, this this will teach these people a real lesson. But you know what? I would like to speak about some Brexit. And let's let, let's start let's start with our um, relationship with America. Start right there, because you know, remember Trump put tariffs on the steel, right? So so um, I've, do you know what? I, I've, I've read I've read something, right? But I can't remember the headline. Of what it was that I read now, right? But I do know that our one of our trade ministers, right, was in America, and um, you know the the steel, right? Because we we had the Americans put tariffs on our steel and on the EU steel, right? But obviously we were still in the EU at the time, right? So so obviously that was covered there, right? So now what's happened, right? Is the Americans have taken the tariffs off of the EU, right? But they've left the tariffs on ours, right? And then one of our one of our um, trade ministers, when questioned as to why that was, she said, "Right, well, um, you know, the Americans are dealing with the um, larger blocks first of all." So, is that what not Barack Obama told you? Didn't Barack Obama say to you, right, that when you leave the EU, right, you're going to be at the back of the queue? And he said queue. You know Americans don't like, you know Americans don't really use that type of language. And they said, oh, well, no, well, David Cameron must have told him to say that. But he was telling you the fucking truth. You'll be at the back of the fucking queue. Or if you want, the back of the line. If you want it like that. Right? But whatever the case, you was going to be at the back. That was always going to be the case. 
Do you know what I mean? And you know, the what gets me right is the stupidity of the people of the of these people not to actually listen to when people actually tell them. People that understand, people who understand how shit works. Even though Donald Trump, right, didn't understand how shit works, right, he still knew that he was deceiving your ass, right, by saying to you, leave, because he knew he could get your financial services under those circumstances. So the stupidity right, of the of the of the um, Brexit Brits, right, is just you know it's on a very high level. Do you know what I mean? The, you know the education level is very very low of of all of your Brexiters, right? Even even your ones who are at the top, right? You know unless unless right they're lying to, unless they're lying right and they don't actually understand and they don't actually understand how the EU worked. Right. You know, when they when they said to you, when they said to you, you know, um, we you know we can we can have our cake and eat it, and you know, and nothing's going to change. We're going to still have the same type of deal. When they said all those things, right? Either right, they're a bunch of fucking liars, right? Or they're as thick as two short planks because they didn't understand how the EU works, right? And they was just saying, and they was just saying stuff. It's the same with Nigel Farage. Do you know what I mean? You know, you have to wonder, you have to wonder again. Do you know what I mean? Whether or not, you know what? Whether or not. Like you're just fucking thick, or you just lied. You just lied your way through, knowing that this was going to be the case. I think it's the latter. I think that these guys just all did. They just they just lied their way through. They just knew, right? But they just thought, you know what? We'll just play on what you know. Uh, listen, there's a lot of people. I don't understand why they've why they why they're back in Brexit. I mean, there's a lot of people in this country. You know, people still saying stupidness on the radio, like you know, um, well. You know, I voted for you know I voted for Boris Johnson. You know, you know to stop Jeremy Corbyn, right? And think yourself. So I just every time I hear that, yeah, I look at the radio and I just say, well, how's that going for you? How is that? How is that going for you? I wish I could have a conversation with every one of them because they were all, you know, you know, because right now, yeah, the NHS right waiting list is the longest ever. We've got one hundred sixty thousand dead people. The farming industries, are, the farming industry have been bollocksed, right? The fishing industry is completely in is, is completely in, in real trouble, right? You know the haulage industry, right? You know these guys, these, these guys said, oh, you know, I tell you what we can do, we can get some um, some winners of the um, Nobel Peace Prize, you know. They're all, they're all very smart people and they will all want to come over to Britain to live in a progressive nation like Britain. They all looked and said, hmm, no. We ain't come to this motherfucking non-progressive motherfucking nation that looks like it wants to go back to the 19 motherfucking 30s. They said no. Well, you know, we, we applied for like, you know, HGV drivers. I don't think we've got a hundred, and we want We want You know, we we applied for like thousands. We wanted, right? You know, we applied for butchers. We got about eighteen or twenty. Because no one wants to come here. No one wants to come to work here. What do we want to come to work here? This is a depressing place. This is a depressing island. So fucking shithole now. These these these, these Brexiters have made this country into. It's a complete shithole. That's what they've done. Right, but anyway, right, you know, I saw an interview, yeah, with a guy, with a former DUP leader, um, Edwin Poots. Now, you know, obviously, you know that, like, obviously, if he's if he's former DUP leader, then you know he's as crazy as a box of motherfucking frogs, right, <laughs> right, with two chickens inside of it. Right, because you know, right, you know the guys who don't understand politics. You know these are some crazy motherfuckers. We have got to remember, yeah, they're also some dangerous motherfuckers. I'll tell you, that, right. If you think, right, that them young black youths in London is bad, right, you can fucking forget it with the people that this motherfucker, right, has got his hands on, right, because these are some serious motherfucking characters, right, let me tell you, right, so Edwin Poots, yeah, right, he basically, he, he said, look, you know what, yeah, if the EU don't back down, basically, yeah, other people are going to take over, and if you see the sinister look on this man's face, right, he looked as if to say, you know what, yeah, you have four lads, big lads, right, coming to your shop, 
right? You know, you've just been trading a month, and they walk in, they say to you, listen, you know something, yeah? Um, every week, right, we're going to come in, right, and, you know, we're going to need you to give us 100 quid. It's for insurance, because, you know, obviously, if you don't do that for us, you know, someone could break your window. Don't know how, but these things happen. Right? <laughs> that is the look what Edwin Poots had on his face. And I was like, my God, you sinister motherfucker. <laughs> you're just open about this shit, right? That's why you're just open about it. Because, you know, already, yeah, it's the, um, it's the unionists, right? And, you know, it's the, it's the terrorist wing of the unionists that he's talking about. Right. And you know, because you know these guys are, you know, it's like um, Sinn Féin and the IRA in it. Do you know what I mean? Right. So the, so obviously the DUP, right, are the spokespeople, right, for that side. <laughs> right. And let me tell you, right, if, I'm telling you, just try look at, just try check it out. Because when I tell you, right, if you see this this guy and how he spoke about this, <laughs> I was like, jeez, right? this guy's taking Brexit to a whole new level. <laughs> just a some different level he's taking Brexit to. Do you know what I mean? He's just telling them straight up in there, other motherfucking people get involved in this shit. All right? <laughs> anyway, guys, this is by any means necessary. I'm DMC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below. <laughs>